What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a new multimeter that I just purchased for my lab setup. Now, I have been using for a long time my trusty Fluke multimeter and I will still use this in a handheld capacity. That's because my new multimeter is a uh, benchtop multimeter, a little bit larger, uh, hard to carry around with me. And so, we're going to show over here on the screen because it's kind of hard to see in the camera. So this is the multimeter that I ended up going with. This is a Siglent uh, four and a half digit multimeter. And other than being a little bit higher quality in general than uh, this Fluke multimeter, it also is programmable. And that is the key thing I have gotten this device for. I wanna be clear that if you are getting into hardware hacking that a multimeter like this, or even a cheaper one, is going to serve you just fine. There are some very specific reasons why I, as a content creator, have chosen to get this, uh, this multimeter, and it's so I can do things like this. I can show an overlay of my multimeter on my screen because this is programmable. So. Uh, here we have this programming guide, and so you'll see that I've made this overlay that I, I just have the multimeter hooked up to my power supply, and so I can uh, you know, increase the voltage, and live on screen for you to see, you can see that voltage overlay. So we're going to talk a little bit about how this is possible with a multimeter like this. So uh, we're going to turn overlay off for a second. So here we have this programming guide, and there is this, uh, this command language, uh, SCPI. So these are types of commands that are somewhat standard for all of these instruments. Actually, uh, you can see over here on my bench, I have a, uh, yeah, well, now you can see it. I have a, an, an oscilloscope, a power supply, and my multimeter in order. And actually, all of these devices support this command set for automating certain actions, which is helpful in some cases. In my case, I am using these commands to, uh, to, to pull data to create this overlay. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I created this overlay and how these commands work. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to stop the, the server that is actively pulling the data that creates my overlay so that I can show you a more uh, manual look at these commands. So here I have a really simple Python script that is the core of the communications with the multimeter. And so you'll see here that uh, we have this library VXI. So VXI is, uh, VXI 11 is uh, some kind of extra abstraction layer for those, uh, for those commands, which now I'm even uh, you know forgetting the acronym, the the SCPI commands, uh, th it's just another layer of abstraction on top of that. And so what we're using is we're we're saying, hey, go connect to this IP address, and it already it runs on the default port. By the way, you should definitely not uh, have this stuff on the internet because there's absolutely no authentication in this protocol. This is this is meant to be on a local network, you know, potentially even a like, like, like a network that doesn't have internet access at all in a lab environment. It is not intended to be secured from uh, untrusted individuals. So just, uh, just had to say that. We're, we're not gonna do like an IoT hacking video on my multimeter because you, if you can connect to this protocol, you can completely control the device. No authentication, no nothing. Uh, but that's not what we're, we're here for. So then we have these sets of commands that we can say, we can say ask. So in this library, in this VXI library, uh, this actually threw me for a loop for a while because at, at first I was doing all these commands in the ask format. So you'll notice that some of these commands, uh, this one and this one have a question mark at the end. And in this command language, a question mark means that, they, that we expect a value to be returned to us. Whereas these other commands are more just like you just you're just writing a configuration a bit of configuration and you don't expect a response back. Um, here we are printing the response, but it's going to be null. So 
Uh, that's just, just so we understand. We're gonna have a bunch of nulls printed out in the script just to be verbose, but it doesn't mean that something's not working properly. So the first command that pretty much everybody uh, in every example tells you to run is this identify uh, command. And so all these commands actually have, like these are all in the shorthand format of the commands. And you'll see they're in this really weird like capitalization. Uh, so here you can see that the configure command, you can just type CONF or you can type configure with the capitalization showing you where you can make the, the shortened version of the command uh, with just the capitalized part. So back to our script. So all we're gonna do here is we're going to configure. So this command is going to configure our multimeter for voltage mode. Uh, it's gonna do a DC voltage reading as opposed to an AC voltage reading. It's gonna set the sample count to one. And then this is the trick that uh, gave me, th this command is, is probably the most important one and it sets the trigger count to like infinite so that it doesn't just like stop and freeze and not give me live updates of, of data when I change something on the meter. And then in it just means to like start. And then we have this loop and in my overlay program, which we'll see in a minute, this is an infinite loop because we just wanna continuously forever take voltage readings. So that's what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull that data and then we're just gonna print it out to the screen. So let's run our Python script and you can see that and I'll, I'll uh, make the voltage go down on my power supply a little bit. And there you can see that our, our 10 readings, it, it did actually go down and it read out that data and it did configure it. It, it, it's, it might be hard to hear, but it actually clicks over there because when you run this configure command, you are actually, you know, you're, you're setting it to a new mode. And even if it was already on that existing mode, it's going to, uh, it's going to go through this initialization process, which I like my program to do every time, uh, just to be sure that everything is good to go. But there are other modes that we can put it in. And so here we have the commands. Whoops. Let's do that. Let's comment out this and let's uncomment all my commands up here. So this, as opposed to voltage mode, we can also put it into continuity mode and we can even do things like setting the threshold. So the way that a continuity test works, right, is that it injects a little bit of voltage through a circuit. And then if the resistance is below, I'm not an electrical engineer, by the way, if the resistance is below uh, a certain threshold, then it considers it to be connected and then it's going to tell you that yes it's connected and the uh this is the configuration for the volume so you can set the volume to high medium low off i believe are all the are all the options here uh, again we set that trigger to you know infinite so that it doesn't ever stop on us and then we run in it and then similarly we use the same exact command to just say hey like give me the last piece of data uh, the latest piece of data from the from the device. We don't really care if we like miss data points because that's another thing that a lot of people will use this programming functionality for is to have uh, a very controlled set of measurements over time. That's not what we're interested in here. We're we're interested in real time data for our overlay. So uh, okay, we can go ahead and save this program and run it again, and then I'm going to connect and open and connect and open. All right. So you can see there that when it's open, it's just, you know, an extremely high uh, number uh, for the resistance value. And so uh, when, when, when it is open like that, actually on the screen, it says open. So in my code, we're going to see in a minute, I have a bit of logic that just does a check to say like, if it's over a million ohms, then, then, uh, then just call it open uh, and, and print that out to the screen instead. So let's go ahead and look at my code over here. So I'm going to go ahead and run our server again, and that should uh, give us our live updates. I'll put the overlay back up there just cause it's pretty cool. And so we'll see, uh, oh, I'm going to put it into continuity mode and we're going to see here 
It says open, gives a value, and it's, audi and it's audibly beeping for me as well here. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how I designed this overlay. So here we are, we are implementing, implementing this as a Flask web application. So in OBS, you can do an overlay that is a browser. So you can just give it a link to a web application and then it will take that web page and set it as the overlay. So this, this open and the ohm symbol that you're seeing up here now, uh, over here, uh, that is being generated from this web application. So uh, all of the white space on the web page, which here I can actually show you the web page right here, uh, all, all the white space, it just, it just knows to make that transparent. So it's, it's pretty smart like that. Um, and so it's only going to overlay uh, this part of the data. So how am I doing this? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show this whole program and I'll eventually post this to GitHub when it is not a super sketchy application right now. It's kind of clobbed together, but you can see I have those same commands and I have my system default to a, a DC voltage mode. That's probably, uh, it's probably the most common thing I'll be doing. Uh, I mean, maybe continuity testing is more common, but I don't know. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna default to voltage mode. And then I have this thing where I can receive a WebSockets command that will set it to either, uh, you know, uh, voltage DC or continuity mode. And then it's going to run all those commands. And then we're going to loop and we're gonna do a bunch of data processing so, but here you see, here you, again, you see that command uh, being sent to pull the last piece of data. And then I'm doing a whole bunch of processing on that data to make it look pretty, uh, to put it in the format that I want to, to, you know, take a bunch of digits off the end that are, that are not even, uh, you know, supported by this multimeter to actually support out to that many digits. So, uh, and then I have two pages actually. So I have the main page that is the overlay. And then I have this control page. And so, what the control page does is this is a page that you'll you usually won't won't see. I'll have it over here on my screen during my videos, and I just have these big buttons on this screen, and these are what are going to send that WebSockets command to change it. So here I can change it to voltage mode, and I can change it to continuity mode, and I'll I can add modes to this, and so. Uh, you, normally this web application, you won't see this. This will be over on my other screen and I can just click it to configure my overlay on the fly and uh, generate uh, this, this data. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, the rest of this is just uh, WebSockets magic. I figured uh, WebSockets was a good choice because I'm sending a bunch of live updates really fast. And so API calls would make the web application kind of kind of laggy and stuff like that. So WebSockets is just like the perfect use case for this for a bunch of like streaming streaming data uh, from the multimeter to the overlay. And and like when when I look at the, what's actually showing up on the multimeter, it is incredibly fast how fast uh, this data is updating for me. And this allows us to do things like so we can go to our microscope here. I'm gonna look under here, and you can see I can have these overlays on any of my views here in OBS. Let's turn on the light. Now I'm going to grab my multimeter. So uh, right now I'm in continuity mode. So let's make sure this device is off. Let's say I'm trying to like find ground. So I'm gonna to touch one thing here to the Wi-Fi, and then if this wasn't labeled this nicely, I could click here. And that's obviously ground. Okay, cool. Now, on my screen, I'm gonna switch to voltage mode and I'm gonna turn this device on. And now underneath the microscope, we're going to take a voltage reading on the TX line, if I can hold still here. And there we go, we can see those fluctuations in the voltage, well, that fluctuation for those from me uh, moving off the pad. But you can see those fluctuations that are the telltale sign that we are on a transmit UART pin.
So uh, I hope that you like this video. This is a little bit more of an insider look at how I develop tooling for my lab as well as making YouTube videos for you. So I hope that uh, this Oh, nice overlay here will uh, be helpful to you while you're watching videos in the future. Have a good day.